Gateshead come to town this Saturday. Um, how, what are your thoughts ahead of this one? Well, we're looking forward to it. Um, they had a hell of a result themselves last week on the road. Um, we we were the only other side in the division that also won on the road on that day. So uh, it's two teams going in there probably with their, their tails up a little bit. So I'm expecting a good game. Mike's got them playing some really good football um, and they have a pure identity in the way they play. So I'm expecting a good game of football, but it'll be competitive. People from that neck of the woods are always competitive. Um, like I said, we're all looking forward to it. In terms of our preparation, obviously we got a great win last weekend against Fylde. Midweek, the Hampshire Cup wasn't as great, was it? But, um, you know, you've got some minutes in the tank for some of our, you know, of lads that haven't featured quite as much. So, you know, it has its benefits there, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, at the end of the day, we warned the youngsters um, on Tuesday night that they were never going to have it all their own way. In fairness to Alton, they, they basically bashed up the back line for the first 20 minutes and went 3-0 up. Fairness to the group, of lads who, like you mentioned, haven't, haven't played a lot lately. I thought they applied themselves well, their attitude was great, and it was all about them getting 90 minutes and coming out of there unscathed, which wasn't easy. Um, so it was quite physical for them again. Uh, but at the end of the day, we've trained on really well this week. The, the group's been buzzing, the weather's been nice, um, and we've had a really good few days training. So, you know, we just can't wait for Saturday to come now. And since we last spoke, we've had an addition, haven't we, in, in Max and Max Dice. So what does he bring to the group? Well. As we were standing here just before I jumped on the bus to file, I had 16 players to pick from last week. Um, this week, would you believe it or not, we're probably going to have to leave about four or five out of the match day squad. So they say a week's a long time in football, it is. We've got international returning, we've got a new, a new sign-in available, um, we've got a lack of returning from, from suspension. So there's all sorts of um, permutations that I'm sure the punters will uh, have their own opinion of, but we will sit down and discuss having watched the, the four training sessions and the game on Tuesday um, and we'll pick a, a group of players that we feel can get us a positive result against Gateshead. That's obviously a good headache to have isn't it and, and, and to add to that as you see Ollie Scott and Ollie Harfield they're both very competent going forward in at that left wing back slot, uh, slot but you know they both played really well on Saturday as well and Ollie showed that he can play Ollie Harfield showed that he can play at centre back as well so another bit of a a puzzle for you to figure out? Well, it's, it's not. It's not a puzzle for me to figure out. It's, it's to guess what, what we're going to play. I think what it does is it gives me options. I don't think anybody who watched us last week could say there was any square pegs in round holes. Everybody who played in the roles that they played, played them to a T, hence the result. So it's lovely when a plan goes together. It doesn't always happen, but ultimately we all, every single one of us in the building here, work for the same goal at the, come five o'clock. Whether we win, lose or draw, we do that together. If we score, we all score. If we concede, we all concede. And I'm a big believer in that. And I think I mentioned to the lads this morning after, at the end of the team meeting, there's going to be eight or nine very, very disappointed lads tomorrow. Some that might have played last week, um, some that weren't available last week might, might be involved. So, you know, that's part and parcel of football. I have to make them tough decisions and I'm the one that will deal with it in-house. But come three o'clock Saturday, every single lad contracted or you know, registered to play for this football club will be 100% behind the 11 lads that start the game. And well, a stat that was shared on social media this week by the league was, was one that, you know, we've scored the most goals at home this season out of all the clubs, 12 at home. So there's definitely some entertainment at the EBB this season, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've, I've gone on record as saying I expect us to score goals in every game we play, home or away. Um, there's only a couple of occasions that we haven't. Um, one of them being when we had 10 men for, for an hour, but I still felt we should have scored a goal. So, yeah, um, I, listen, I don't look at stats like that. I, I don't look at much social media because one day you're up there and the next day you're down here. So I'm very well aware of that. Just the, the media hype over the, the England situation this week shows you there's a lad there, whatever anybody thinks, he's at the top of the, the English game. The guy plays for England, he's captain England, and he's getting vilified for scoring an own goal. It's nonsense, you know. People who like to put things out on social media just need to have a look and think, if that was aimed at them and they were in the public eye, how would they react to that? It's it's okay when it comes off your finger or out of your mouth as a, as a comment at a football match, that's fine. But when it becomes personal on, on social media, I think it's time to rein it in a bit.